sitting, but ah, oh, Philly kid, here we are. First show of the week. Look at you. You want to share up? I'll give you a chance to share up before I yeah. get the uh, before I hit the intro to the program. Let me share it up. Philly kid, what a weekend we are coming off of. Oh my god! I visited my daughter at college. I'm going to show you a little video. I was in like this the this Sodom and Gomorrah den of iniquity, Phil, and in this a fraternity party. Uh, you, went, that my, you went to a fraternity party with your daughter? I went to a fraternity party with my wife and my daughter and my youngest daughter. That's not strange at all. Uh, not <laughs> strange at all. And let's just say me getting drunk at the fraternity party was not strange at all either. So it was uh, what it all worked itself oh, out. Wow. <laughs> How you doing, nice. my man? You ready to roll? You all shared up? We have a huge show tonight. Unbelievable show. I'm sharing it up as we speak. Here we go. All right, we're going to get this thing kicked off. By the way, uh, Bill Engvall is back all yes. the way from Mexico. Nice. Uh, he, he's about to kick off his farewell tour. The guy's retiring from stand-up. Oh, uh, man. And he's also got this new show out called Blue Collar Auction, which is pretty cool. Uh, and Caitlin Tarver, uh, coming up a little later on, this young lady who's an amazing singer. She uh, is and amazing. she's also an amazing actress. She's been in Ballers with The Rock on HBO. Uh, she was in Nickelodeon's Big Time Rush, a couple of movies, but uh, we have an amazing show. Suki, uh, something came up for her about an hour ago, so she couldn't make it, uh, which is our gain because that means you get to fill in and you're much better looking. She's healthy, um, though, right? She's healthy. Everything's fine. Okay. They're just all work-related with some stuff at TLC. Gotcha. Uh, and again, we're coming up with Bill Engvall, who, who's been in our intro uh, for the last couple months because he's one of my favorite guests, Phil. So here we go. We'll kick it off. Everybody's lighting it up, and uh, we'll see you on the other side. The Suki and Scott Show. This is one of the funnest shows I've ever done. <laughs> When you're with me, I'm smiling. It's musical. It's magical. Sookie and Scott, the seven of hearts. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I never yeah. seen this is a sexy show. Someone's getting some action. Now, these larger than life personalities are on an exciting new journey as they bring you the Suki and Scott Show. You guys I nailed it. You're great. You ask great questions. You listen. I answered you because I have respect for you guys and it was a question respectfully put. The Suki and Scott Show is your one-stop destination for humor. You like De Niro and Kate Pierre. <laughs> <laughs> Counselor! Entertainment. Jesse's girl. girl! Wonderful! Can you paint with all the colors of the wind? <laughs> and optimism. You guys have such amazing energy. Ultraviolet light, it gets in there and it just fights. It just fights the uh, gun flu. Is that right? Okay. <laughs> Let's laugh together. I love him. The Suki and Scott Show. Yes. And Phil, people are wondering why the heck we're not on at 1 o'clock in the afternoon today. We're live, live here at 730 on this Tuesday night. Uh, well, listen, the, the COVID situation's kind of over, uh, and I've been doing my WWE stuff from my basement for a year and a half. I don't do that anymore. They got me putting my suit on, and I'm driving up to the studio. I don't get back in time. So we had to switch our Tuesday nights back to 730. So here we are, my friend, back in prime time, if you will. Well, you know, that happens, Scotty. I mean, when you have when you have the number one show on the, uh, the Stern Network, and celebrities from around the world are clamoring mm -hmm. to be on the Suki and Scott. Wait, show. so did you did you say number one on the Stern Network? I just have number to have the one my on the Stern, yeah. the Stern Network over That's unbelievable such, such legendary shows as Heartland, <laughs> Showtime at the Apollo, Deal or No Deal, Forensic Files, and on and on and on. I mean, yeah. number one, you can't beat that. It's it's no. unbelievable. We're we're beating reruns of the Johnny Carson show, which our first uh, guest tonight actually appeared on back when he was a youngster. First start now. Uh, yes. Bill Engvall is joining us in just a second from uh, Mexico, no less, on vacation. Phil took the time out to hang with us tonight. Bill Engvall, that's that's a that's a real man right there. He He's said to great. his wife, "Listen, I could be drinking margaritas right now on the beach. I'm coming on the Suki and Scott show. Talk to me in a half an hour." Yes, exactly. He's a great guy, man. <laughs> He's, uh, you know, what what else can you say? He's uh... and, and Philly kid. You know, last week we had uh, Kevin Eubanks on. Uh, oh, yeah. he's, he's on that new You Bet Your Life with Jay Leno. And I'm feeling very quizzical because, you know, he was on and we did the whole You Bet Your Life. So, uh, you know, later on, I'm going to put you and Bill to the test on maybe a little sitcom trivia. 
Uh, oh, you no. know, he had his own sitcom. He's on a couple of shows. Yeah. Um, but he's got the blue collar auction out right now, which is a really cool show. And he's about to embark on his uh, final tour. I think he's hanging it up later on in 2022. Uh, but let me give you a little of um, Bill on the uh, the blue collar auction show. Show you what it's all about. It's really cool. They got some amazing items and, and the celebrities come on. Take a look and we'll bring Bill in on the other side. Here you go. So the first thing you're going to say is, hey, man, that's really cool. All right, Richard, crank it up. Happy birthday to you. There better be some damn bids coming up for this. They're going to want to know about this thing. You know, it's Hollywood history. It's music history. All right, bidders. Do me a favor. Let me hear this horn. Yeah, I I love it. Hi, I'm Bill Ingvall. Watch my new show, Blue Collar Auction, right here. Only on Circle. Ah, uh, yes, indeed. There he is, ladies and gentlemen. How are you, Scotty? Phil, all I have to tell you is by you saying this is the the, the most fun you've had on any show, and that that's made us millions of dollars so far, Bill. Millions in advertising, sponsorships from that one line alone, my friend. So I gotta I gotta send you a little cut, maybe 10%. Yeah. Well, listen, you still hope you're still position number one for me. <laughs> and Bill, last time you were on Suki, of course, here, this is this is Phil. Our, yep. hey, Phil. Uh, Phil's our, he's like our musical director, our crooner, our resident vet. Um, and he's uh, he, he is a very popular uh, viral sensation, I have to say. I know he's big down here. Uh, they've got a, a, a drink named after him. <laughs> hey, I just got to tell you, uh, Bill. First of all, I am a huge, huge fan, have been for many, many years. You know, my first memory of you is my wife and I, we got married in 1981. Now, I, And you used to come to Oklahoma City. I live in Oklahoma. And you would come to Oklahoma City. I still vividly remember the uh, commercials for Bill Ingvall in Oklahoma, coming to Oklahoma City. <laughs> yeah, and Joker, uh, Joker's Comedy Club. Yes. Yes. And wow. uh, that's my early. Okay, I'm going to tell you a funny story about that. So that was so far back that Jokers was in a strip mall <laughs> and next to it was a hot shot water beds. And I used to <laughs> in between shows, I'd go look in the window and go, oh, man, I would love to have a water bed with mirrors. And <laughs> then my wife and I got married and she went, no, we're not having a water bed with mirrors. <laughs> and that, that dream went out the window. Yeah. And if I recall right, in the commercial, did you, you had shoulder length hair at that time, right? It was longer, yeah. Yeah, okay, I remember that. <laughs> but but also, I want to tell you that uh, I've been a big fan for a lot of years, my wife and I both. And, uh, you know, not only are you one of the funniest guys on the planet, one of the reasons that I am such a huge, huge fan is because your your awesome support of our military, our troops, our veterans. I mean, you performed at the USO galas, uh You've done shows for the troops. And I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for your support. I, under, I, I read that your dad was a Navy veteran. He was a doctor in the Navy, correct? And, yeah, uh, he was uh, He was in the, the public health service at the time. And I want to thank you so much from the bottom of my heart on on for, for the support, basically. Thank you well, so much for that. Listen, thank you for that compliment. I don't, it's mind blowing, uh, but I just know that everybody in America should drop to their knees and thank the good Lord above that I wasn't in the military because it would not have gone pretty. <laughs> well, I thought there was. I thought you were in the military. Weren't you in the National Guard? I saw you. No, I do. I couldn't even make it in the Boy Scouts. <laughs> <laughs> that was bad. Those flat feet will get you every time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Flat feet <laughs> and low IQ. <laughs> That's so no, funny. Bill, listen, man. So let's let's talk about this blue collar auction uh, show that you just kicked off uh, back in September. It's on Circle TV, which you get through Peacock. I guess everybody, you know, you check on on your phone, on your on your computer where to find it. But it, it's such a cool concept. Uh, you guys have had so many crazy um, items that are up for auction. I'm, I'm going to show one real quick, and we'll talk more about it. Um, here's a quick clip with a, I guess, an, a, an amphibious car. Oh yeah, that was uh, cool. That was very cool. Check this out, and then we'll and then we'll talk more on the other side. Watch, Mike, this. you got to be digging this. I do. Like I said, I'm I'm really interested in the engineering of it. It's a Triumph motor, right under a 1200 cc, which creates about a 43 uh, horsepower on it. The props work really nice. It steers by the front tires on land and on water. <laughs> it was well thought when they built this thing. 
All right, so uh, you bring up a great. That's that's wild. So now, people, who bids on the on the auction bill? Is it viewers? Yeah. Uh, well, we we shot ten of them, uh, and obviously for the first few, we had to have you know preset bidders uh, that would be on a video screen. And the thing I love about this show is, as opposed to a show like Antique Road Show or even down like Storage Wars, you know where they go, oh well, that's worth forty thousand dollars, or that's worth five hundred. You never see them sell it. You know, we, we sat, listen, and we tell them right up front, it's not, it doesn't matter what I think or what the expert thinks. It's what right. the bidders are willing to pay. So, listen, I could tell you tickets to my show are worth 100 grand each, but if you're only willing to pay 20, guess what they're worth? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> That's it, 20 bucks. And you, you know, how would you describe this thing? I mean, how would you describe blue collar? It's a, that's a great question. It's, a, it's kind of an American Pickers meets Meekum auto show uh anybody can bid on this stuff that's the thing i love the best is you don't got to be a bazillionaire to bid on this stuff we sell stuff from like like the amphibicar then we turn around and sold uh, a dress that may west wore in one of her movies uh we sell weird stuff like we had a couple come in they were all dressed in goth and they had a metal box with windows on it and inside of it was the skeletons of two bats and I said, I remember saying, you know, I, and I asked him, I go, what do you want for this? And they said, we'd like to get 500 bucks. I'm like, good luck. <laughs> so for 750, I mean, it's, who knew there was that many bat freaks out there? But the uh, it's, it's, and I, the thing I love the most about this show is that, you know, I'm not up there going, hey, give me five, give me, but I just talk to the viewers. Right. I talk to the sellers and get the story for the bidders. And uh, we've had Lorenzo Lamas on. We had uh, the original Gas Monkey, Richard Rollins on. Uh, Kyle Petty came on and did some stuff for his, his charity. So, And there's just really cool items uh, for this thing. And I think the dream is that we'll get a website up where you can actually bid on online on some of these things. And then hopefully you get on the show with me and we sell something that you want, uh, that you want to, to sell. Uh, it, and it's just real low key. Uh, and that's the thing I love about it. I, I'm at the age now I'm past the yelling and screaming and all that. Yeah. I'm, I'm just, uh, you know, I just want to just have some fun and, uh, and I, I really love doing this show and hopefully it's going to get picked up for more. Uh, but and it looks like it's doing really well. So we'll see. Nice. Nice. Hey, Bill, you know, one of my favorite, uh, like a lot of people, uh, some of my favorite comedy stories are, the, of course, the here's your sign stories. And, uh, you know, you're doing the uh, farewell tour. And uh, back in the day when you first you came up with this with this uh, this this concept, for lack of a better word. Did you at that time have any idea that it was going to go so global and become oh, such, such no. a such a so embedded in the english vernacular i mean i live here in oklahoma and we still say it almost every day <laughs> <laughs> well i've always loved oklahoma and uh yeah no phil there's no way i could you know that the idea behind the joke was that it, the joke used to say that i thought stupid people should be slapped <laughs> and uh one day my wife said you know you don't look like you the kind of guy walks around slapping people so i came up with this idea of a sign that just said i'm stupid and you'd give them out when somebody did or asked something stupid so nobody else would rely on them. And this thing went crazy to the point that I used to sell little paper signs after the show that said, I'm stupid with a string attached to them. <laughs> and I'd sell them for a dollar a piece or two for five bucks. And you would be amazed at how many people thought two for two five for bucks. Five. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got to tell you one time at the Oklahoma State Fair, when I was a police officer, I would work out there for a couple of weeks and uh, we were walking around. We had to check some of the vendors. Well, there was a, uh, a guy selling T-shirts and uh, it was one T-shirt that had your picture on it. And it said, here's your sing. <laughs> and as I and G, so I said, hey, uh, you know, you might want to uh, you might want to take, do something with that T-shirt before, you know, the fair board finds out about you selling. Here's your sing. Here's sure thing. <laughs> but, I uh, tell you, so I, I that bit is either you get it. Like I've, I've, I've actually been. Uh, I remember playing uh, uh, the, after Blue Collar got really, really big. There was actually Blue Collar dolls, which was insane. But I remember uh, one night I went down. I was in Park City, Utah, and I walked down to the Seven Eleven 
and they had my doll on the counter for sale. Oh my god! <laughs> and I picked it up and I looked at the guy working the behind the thing. I said, "Hey, look, it's me." And he goes, "Do you want to buy?" And I said, "No, look, man, it's me. It's Bill Ingvall." And he goes, seven dollars." I went, "Oh my god, seven dollars for a Bill Ingvall doll?" That's the uh, so yeah. It's uh, it's it's a it's it's been a you know what I got to tell you, and I kind of tie this into the retirement thing. This has been a really fun, fun journey. And I've never regretted any part of it. Uh, it's, I've been doing it for 42 years and uh, it's, I'm a granddad now. So I want to spend some time with my granddaughter and my wife sure. you know, who's put up with this shenanigans show for, you know, 42 years. Uh, and, and I, you know, I'm not going away. I'm just, you know, I'm just, the traveling has gotten hard. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm not getting any younger. So uh, it's it's the right thing to do. And I always said uh, that I wanted to go out on my terms. Right. And, uh, you know, because we've all been to a show where you watch somebody and you're all excited and you get there and you go, oh, they should have quit a year ago. <laughs> and I never want to be that guy. But you stayed uh, one, one too long, right? One too long. Yeah, you, it's, yeah. It's like back when I was in college, you know, we'd go to a party. I go, man, I feel great. One more drink and I'll feel fabulous. No, you don't. You know, it's like. <laughs> So, but it's been a lot of fun for me. I listen, and I never thought if you'd have told me 40 years ago that it was going to last this long, I would have said they legalized marijuana in Oklahoma. Uh, it is, it's, it's just been a dream ride and I've made some great friends, you know, obviously like Scott and Suki and you and, and people all across the country that, uh, that are, are, are really true friends in the sense that, you know, they would say, Hey, you, if you need a place to stay, come to my house. Uh, and the thing that I loved, loved, loved the most about this is for whatever reason, the good Lord has given me, blessed me with the ability to make people laugh and feel better. And it's, it's, it's been a, it's been great to, to provide that service for, for so many years. Well, yeah. all right. So, so this farewell tour is called, here's your sign. It's finally time. Uh, and you're gonna, you're gonna wrap it up, I guess, sometime in 2022. Are you so so mentally? It sounds like you're ready to just to just call it a day, right? I, I I'm I'm I've i I've, I've passed that point of, am I doing the right thing? Uh, and I know it's the right thing to do. Uh, it's uh, listen. If somebody, I'm sure if somebody threw some stupid money, I mean, said we want you to do a show for us, I'd probably jump in. But just as far <laughs> as regular touring, uh, 22 will be the last year. And, uh, and, you know, also the world's changed, uh, you know, people are for whatever reason, so much u more Uber sensitive about everything. And even though I do a clean show and it's a family, you know, not a family show, but it's a show about my family. Uh, I don't need people showing up with their four-year-old kids, but <laughs> we, uh, it's, uh, I I've done what I was supposed to do. And, uh, hopefully I can concentrate on acting and film now uh, a little bit more, uh, to do stuff like that. And uh, it's, it's, you know, when, when something feels right, you just know it in your heart. And, and that's what this is. Uh, hopefully, like the Blue Collar Auction Show, like I said, will continue to go because that's really fun for me to do. But it's also time for me to be Bill the Family Guy uh, for, for the first time. And uh, exactly. I've already started. We're down here in Mexico. I played golf yesterday with my son. I saw me. that. You put that on Instagram. I saw yeah, that. Yeah, which just, you know, and... And I, I want to try to get back some of the time that they've given up for allowing me to chase this dream. Uh, and uh, I think everybody is good, good with it. Yeah. You know, speaking of your, uh, your farewell tour, I was checking the uh, show dates and you're going to be in Tulsa on April 1st in 2022. So yep. I'm already making plans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've, uh, you know, it's, it's crazy when I think back over the years of all the places I've played and uh, people I've worked with uh, over the years. And I, I sometimes have to just kind of pinch myself to go, wow, this was, this was fun. You know, working with Fox there and, and Larry and Ron, we just had the time of our lives. I mean, you got four guys selling out arenas. Yeah. You know, one of my favorite stories is that we held the record at the Nashville arena for selling out in 24 hours. And then it was broken by Bon Jovi. That's right, two bon Jovi. things that don't go together: blue right, collar right. comedy tour and Bon Jovi. <laughs> but we, uh, you know, it's 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 just been a, just a, a literally a dream. I mean, it's uh, you you know you always hope things are going to work out, but like with the, the way it, it the, my career turned out, I could you know to have my own show and working with Jennifer Lawrence uh, and 
and just having the that experience. I mean, it's like because it's easy in this business, uh, Scott, as you well know, that it's easy in this business to to get caught up in what you haven't done and you forget all the stuff you have done. Yeah, yeah, right. And to be honest with you, and I say this with uh, all due sincerity in my heart, is I've achieved every goal I wanted. And, uh, you know, it's, you know, everybody says, oh, you're chasing that brass ring. I caught the brass ring. It's like, uh, you know, it's, and it was wonderful. And uh, it's just time for me to, to step aside traveling for the, now and, uh, you know, maybe help others along, you know, reach back and help some other young comedian who's uh, coming up. And, uh, but for right now, you know, I'm going back to, I went back to school. I got my degree. Uh, which was great, which I never thought I'd see that day that I got to walk across the stage and, and get my diploma. Nice. Uh, and so I'm going to do some more classwork. Uh, uh, I'm doing some counseling courses. And uh, uh, I don't know where the next chapter is. And sometimes that's a good thing. You know, it's uh, sometimes it, it's better just to, to kind of roll with it and see what, what, what the what gets put in front of you. Yeah. Hey, you when know. you were when you were graduating and before you walked across the stage, did you tell the guy handing out the diplomas, whatever you do, do not say, here's your sign. <laughs> no, I'll tell you what's funny is that, uh, I didn't say that, but uh, <laughs> what's funny is that when people at the graduation ceremony, when I was walking across the stage, the guy, not the guy handing out the diplomas, but this, this professor behind him, they said, Bill Ingvall. And he goes, Bill Ingvall? <laughs> <laughs> like, he, yeah, made it? he made it out? He made it out, you know. Was, That's so funny. But, uh, yeah, I, I actually uh, had a great time. I went to Grand Canyon University, and I did it online uh, just because I didn't want the other kids to know how old I was. But I think I might have blown it when I asked questions like, what's TikTok? And, you know. <laughs> how do you work this thing? It's like I was laughing, Scotty. Before we, the, the, your listeners didn't even hear this. But before we started, this, Scott says, if you want to share this, you can. And I'm like, How? I, you're, I'm the most technically challenged person. I literally am those people like in the, the becoming your parents ads where like, I have to have the paper ticket. I, I'm not right, good. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. you, you know, what's funny, Bill, the, the mark of, of great comedians is when you guys put stuff in your act that other, that the audience can relate to and everyday things that happen to us. I, I found a clip of you today, uh, which is so me and my wife in the car and she drives me insane. Uh, I'm going to play that clip, and everything uh -oh. you say in this clip is the exact thing that my wife does with me. Why? How come whenever I'm driving and I barely touch the brakes, out of the corner of my right eye, this is what I see? <gasps> what is... Dustin Hoffman couldn't act that good. <gasps> and, like, that's going to stop him from going through the windshield. I mean, let me tell you something. You are never going to hear this on the news. And the woman would have survived the crash, but she didn't grab the dashboard in time. Back to you, Jim. Can I tell you something? I have my, my, about that one. We, uh, we drive to, you know, New York City. We drove to my daughter's college this weekend. Every time I'm in the car with my wife, if some, someone could be a mile ahead of us, they hit that brake light, she, she, I get one of these. And it sends me through the roof, and I'm like, when and I and, and my wife has a tendency of taking her foot and putting it on the dashboard to stop us from hitting somebody. Wow, I you said, got that work. Yeah, I said, do you know, if we actually hit somebody, you're gonna break your nose with your knee. I'm I like, tell you, what my wife she, does. Now, what she does now is we'll be driving, and she'll go, "You're supposed to turn left back there." Right. <laughs> Maybe you could have told me that before we got right to the, the left. Yeah. Yeah. Or have you ever heard, have you ever heard, honey, if you don't turn your blinker on, the people are not going to know that you want over and they won't let you over. Oh yeah. I've heard. And my answer is, see, no, because if I turn my blinker on, then they speed up to get up ahead of me. So it's better to give them the element of surprise. Yeah. It's, let me tell you, we all do the same thing. It's just with different accents. That's what yeah. I figured out in comedy. And, uh, you know, and God bless my wife. She's, she's put up with, you know, everybody, I always get tickled when people see her and they go, are all those stories true? And I'm, I'm in the background going, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and she's like, no, they're exaggerated. And right. That worst noise is when they go <gasps> and you're, and you're like, Jesus, yeah. nothing's happening. You, you're killing me. I'm having a heart attack. Yeah. It's uh you know, that's, what's been fun for me is just, I like, I always know I've written a good joke. 
when I see a husband or a wife kind of elbow each other, right, like, yeah, right. that, that's you right there. <laughs> that's you. That's you. Yeah. Um, the, yeah. It's, uh, it's, you know, like I said, that I, I, and I had forgotten about that bit. There's uh, a, yeah, and, and the stuff that, uh, that my wife has to put up with is just, I, I tell you a, a quick story. Uh, she had gone to one of these lady parties where they sell like lingerie and stuff like that. And uh, by the time she got back, I was in bed watching a football game. And I said, hey, how was the party? She goes, oh, it was great. She goes, me and my friends had a blast. I said, well, good for you. I said, I'm glad you went. She goes, I bet you will because I bought something for you. And I'm like, really? <laughs> and she threw on the bed this little pair of baby blue silk boxer shorts with a little rose on it. Nice. And I looked and I said, have you lost your mind? And she said, fine. Sorry, I thought about you. And she walked out of the room. I'm like, you know what? All I had to do was put them up in the closet. Nobody ever sees them again. But I tried to be Mr. Funny Guy and I hurt her feelings. So... <laughs> I put them on and kind of sashayed into the kitchen. I said, well, what do you think? And she goes, good Lord. And I said, well, hey, you bought them. She goes, yeah, for me to wear for you, Bill, not you to wear for me. <laughs> the, rose, was, the rose should have given it away. Dude, I'm so, I, I'm so oblivious. I, I, you know, I figured it's just some kind of whoever made them put it on there, but yeah, it, it's uh, there's there's been some times in our in our marriage that uh, I'm sure she's I'm sure when I'm on the road, she drinks heavily, uh, <laughs> you know, just. <laughs> you know, I was watching uh, I was perusing uh, Bill Engvall videos and uh, one of one of the uh, titles caught my eye. It said I.G. Joe. And I said hey, and I, I called my wife and said, hey, come here, let's watch this. Uh, Bill Engvall is going to talk about Instagram. See what he has to say about Instagram, because it. It said IG Joe, but come to find out, come to find out, it was your boy when he was little. That's what he yeah. called him. He, called he couldn't G. say GI Joe. Joe, so he called him his IG Joe. IG Joe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, uh, Phil, I feel better now. The fact that actually, the fact that you even thought it was Instagram shows you're way ahead of me because. <laughs> yeah, Phil can at least share the show, Bill. Yeah, uh, I, I, I swear to you, I would love to have shared to all your, I would love to have shared this, but as soon as you said that, I was like, I, I don't I don't know how to share this. <laughs> Listen, as you get ready to embark on this final stand-up tour, again, you're not giving up acting and things, just right. the, the stand-up tour. What do you think when you see this picture right here? Oh my God. That uh if I'm not mistaken, that was in that was the Tonight Show. Yes. That was backstage at the Tonight Show, and I don't know who that guy is. Uh that was one of the craziest, you know, I'll tell you a funny story was I was, you jumped through so many hoops to get on the tonight show yeah. back then when Carson was doing it. And thank goodness, a friend of mine, a female comedian came by who had done it. And she said, look, when you walk out there, she goes, look at doc and the band, look at Johnny and Ed, look at the audience and then go, because it's so overwhelming. Uh, I, I remember thinking the studio was huge and I got there and I was like, wow, this is tiny. And uh, they, uh, the funny story about this is that they, after I finished, actually Carson was going to call me over, but Victoria Principal went too long on her segment and I got uh, bumped from the couch. Because oh, <laughs> uh, that was always the big thing, right? If oh, you're yeah. A comedian, that's, that's, that's Johnny right. calls you over. You're in Schaefer City right yep, there. Yep. The, uh, then the guy, I finished the show and the guy said, let me tell you something. He said, that was great. This is the first of many appearances. And then the guy got fired, and I was never on it again. <laughs> oh, jeez. So you had one shot on the Tonight I had Show. had one huh? shot, but I got it with Johnny and Ed and Doc, and it was it was everything I dreamt it would be. Uh, it was just – I was so happy I got to do the show before Johnny left us. You know, you've had you've had quite the uh, career. I mean, in uh, the farewell or tour, tour is coming up. And uh, if you had to – if you had to give a piece of advice to uh, somebody who's just starting out in, in comedy – or say to a young Bill Engvall, what what uh, what advice would you give yourself? You know, that's a great question, Phil. Um, I think what I would tell them is there's two things you need to know. One, you don't have to be the funniest guy ever. What audiences want is to, for you to be related. Well, they want to know you're like them. And I stand by this. People have said I was wrong, but my uh, my is it, it, people want it to be clean. There's, there's a niche audience for everybody, but overall, 
listen, I can tell you the a dirt joke that would even curl your hair, Phil, as it is short <laughs> as it is now. But, you know, when I would write a show, I would try to write it in the sense of, would my wife sit through this for 90 minutes? And uh, I think that if you can, do, you can do those two things, you can have a really long career uh, because everybody loves, like when I'm hanging out with my buddies, we tell jokes all the time, you know, dirty jokes, whatever. Yeah. But when, when I, you know, when someone is plopped down a hundred bucks for two tickets to my show, I, I want to show them there's more to me than just the, you know, the ability to cuss, you know, uh, and, and listen, there's people who made a living at that. And I, and I give them all the credit in the world, but it's just not, if I, I'll tell you a funny story that I told my friend, I said, the last show I ever do live, I'm going to say everything I ever wanted to say on stage. <laughs> and he said, no, you won't. And I said, you're right. I won't. You're right. You won't <laughs> do it. Well, Bill, that, that kind of answers my next question. Cause I had this conversation with George Lopez last week, uh, Love which, George. Which, which is, he's the best, which was one of the pieces we did for extra. And one of the questions I asked him was, is if A, if he had seen the Dave Chappelle, the last special on Netflix that Chappelle's taking so much flack for. Right. Uh, you know, the whole cancel culture and, you know, he was hitting the trans, you know, the transgender uh, community, that whole thing. I watch him. I think he's I think he's amazing. Nothing I watch from a comedian ever offends me. Nothing. Right. Whatever they said, whoever they knock, it's, it's every every man for himself. So I asked George, and 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 you kind of answered it. But when as you go out on this tour and you are writing and putting together your jokes, are you thinking of that cancel culture in your head where you don't want to really say anything to overly offend anybody? Is that like a conscious decision by you? Um, I, the short answer for me personally is no, only because I don't worry about it because I don't do it. Uh, right. That's that's why know, I said you answered it, it. It's just not. It's not in my makeup it's not what people expect from me and uh it's listen there's so much stuff i i could tap on but it's like like i could write the greatest political joke in the world but as soon as i do it you've eliminated 50 percent of your audience whether they like the joke or not and it's yeah and, and i always scotty i always figured that my job is not to use the stage to further my agenda Mm -hmm. My job is to make you laugh, make you feel better than you did when you got here. Right. And when you leave, I want you to say, man, that was great. I had a, a blast oh, instead yeah. of saying, well, I wish he hadn't done this or, you right. know, did he, did he really have to do that? Uh, and that's just me personally. You know, like I said, people have made a living at it, but uh, it, it, I honestly, honestly believe uh, that that is what has extended my career for as long as it was. Yeah, Bill, I, I don't think you can be canceled because I, you know, People with signs still love you to this day. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the beauty. The people that need the sign don't know they need it, and they just think it's a funny bit. You know, that's it's great. It's, it's kind of like the, what's the old saying? They say one out of every three people is ugly, and they say if you look to your left, you look to the right, it's not them. Guess what? That's it's right. You. It's it's you. <laughs> yeah, a lot of that stuff. Just you know, I I, I heard uh, Foxworthy in the car today. I like to listen to comedy greats on Sirius, and he was doing as you know, he was doing his. You know, you're a redneck if right. But, and you've heard those things a thousand times, and I'm still in the car laughing at myself because it's just it's such funny stuff. It just never gets old. Well, you look you look at the guys that really have made a career. Like, I go back to guys like uh, Bob Newhart, uh, that that group, uh, and the reason they transcended for so long was because people didn't have to worry about what they were going to say, you know, uh, you know, whether it was going to be offensive or, or not. Hey, you know, Lord knows these days what people I'm sure somebody could find something offensive in my, you know, it's like, I had a, uh, I'll tell you a funny story. This is the kind of what happened. So, uh, I got my degree in Christian studies and, uh, people know it. And I do this thing on Sunday mornings on Facebook called Sunday mornings with bill. And it's just like a little 10 minute inspirational thing, I'm not telling people what they need to believe, or it's just, this is, I always tell them this is about me. Right. Uh, and so, we were shooting a blue uh, a, a promo for blue collar auction, and there was this really cool piece of furniture that had a turntable, it had an eight track player, and it had a wet bar in it. It was the classic college piece of furniture I would have had in a minute. And so, as one of the promos, I had a, a fake glass of scotch, and I and the, the promo I went, "Oh, are you still here? We just like to do quality control on our products." You know, I got the fake glasses. Somebody on my like Twitter account wrote in. How can you call yourself a Christian yet you're pushing drinking on TV? I'm like, wow, you, you 
You got bigger issues than I can deal oh, with. Oh, I right get now. it. That's wild. <laughs> Here's your I, sign. I love it. And my it. answer was, by the way, I believe it was Jesus who turned water into wine. So maybe <laughs> we ought to just take a little step back. <laughs> well, Bill, listen, at Blue Collar Auction, uh, it's on right now, Circle TV. Uh, you can get there through Peacock. Uh, you got your farewell stand-up comedy tour coming up. Uh, here's your sign. It's finally time. Uh, when do you when do you get out on the road? Is it next year? Are you uh, soon? Right, right now, I'm kind of just doing dates that had to be canceled because of the whole COVID mess. COVID. Uh, so really, really the the but it's the last time I'll be at these places. Uh, January one is when the, the the real final tour starts, and uh, uh, it's uh, it, I'm looking forward to I'm looking forward to seeing the folks again, and 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 and, and it's I've had an overwhelming response of, of I'm glad you're doing what you want to do, and. Uh, you know, that's uh, that that makes you feel good. Uh, we'll when, see you in Tulsa on yeah. April Fool's Day. Bill, listen, as as you head off into semi-retirement and you're drinking your coffee in the morning, you're going to need a Suki and Scott show mug, right? Or a Phil mug. I'm, I of course I do. Of course I do. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say all guests of the Suki and Scott show receive a Suki and Scott show mug, but they don't. You have to buy it. It helps the disabled vet. Phil, you got to, if you get a chance, maybe you've already, if you haven't, but. You ought, to, you ought to look up the video of when I flew with the Thunderbirds. That was uh, oh nice. That was yeah. insane. But hey, listen, Scotty, you know I love you guys, and, and please Still give you the best, love. buddy. Give give Suki my love. Tell her uh, that uh, we'll see her on the next time around. And uh, thank you for letting me be on the show. It's just like I said in the promo. It's my favorite show to do. Listen, man, we enjoy Mexico, and and sometime in the spring when you you're floating around the country on the tour, you have a a, a couple minutes off. Come back on and join us. All right. You know I will. You, you listen. I, you better be careful. I'm like that relative that shows up and doesn't leave. <laughs> That's all right, man. You're welcome to stay. Your anytime. poor wife will be like, "How long is he staying with?" Been like a month. <laughs> listen, man. Enjoy the rest of your trip in Mexico, Bill. We love you, pal. Thanks, guys. Take, Take care, care, Phil. Bill. All right, Take Scotty. care, bud. Uh, he's the best, Phil. Isn't he, he is the best. Wow. He's such such a good guy. Such a man, he's on man. vacation in Mexico. How many people would do that? To come on the show. You know, if, if you would have told me back in 1980, I think it was 81, 82, when I was yeah. seeing commercials for him appearing in Oklahoma City and that one day I would get to meet him and actually interview him on the Suki and Scott show, one of the you know best shows on planet Earth. This show's been wild for you, especially because, <laughs> you know, people you're singing with Richard Marks and I meet all these different people. It's it's so funny, man. Wow. Yes, nice. it's so funny. We've had yeah. so many people on the show. It's amazing. And Phil, let me tell you something. Our next guest coming up in just a few seconds, uh, yeah. Caitlin Tarver. She is uh, an amazing. So you even said it to me before we started the show. You're watching her today. You're like, wow, she's amazing. Yes. Um, and what I didn't know until I, I read some of her biography uh, is that she was in uh, Nickelodeon's Big Time Rush, which my daughter was very excited about. Uh, she's been on uh, Ballers with my guy, The Rock. Uh, on HBO and, and a couple other movies. So she's coming up in just a few minutes. Um, again, Suki off tonight. She had something come up. Uh, Philly, of course, usually joins us in the OT. We sing and goof around. We'll still do that a little later on. Uh, oh. but, but Caitlin's going to uh, join us in a second. Hopefully uh, she'll sing for us as well. We'll have some fun with her. But Phil, last week, okay, before we get to Caitlin, not everybody's got their own personal theme song on this show. So last week we had our boy YX uh, uh, official on the show, another viral sensation, talented guy, great music. He's the one who who, who bothers his girlfriend, sings all the songs to her. Yeah. Right yeah. off the cuff, I gave him some information about you, and he made you a theme song. Here it was, in case you missed. Phil it. is a uh, he's a, a a U.S. Air Force vet. He's a former Oklahoma police officer. And the women around the world love him because he's he he sings like a madman. All right, all right. Uh, Phil, I'm sure you give the ladies chills. Yeah, Phil, you walk around with the light and thrill. But I bet there might have been a time when you pulled me over. I'm not really sure, but there might have been a time when you pulled me over. I said, Phil. You probably make the ladies go wild. I bet that Phil's the only one who can put on their smile. Yeah, but I bet one time you probably pulled me over. 
because I'd be driving crazy. But one time, you probably pulled me over. I don't know much about you, but you seem like a cool dude. And that doesn't matter that you can't grow hair on the top of your head. It works for <laughs> <laughs> Oh, if I man, keep going, I, I'm gonna end up making jokes there. Probably that's great. No, that's let your me, new theme. Let, that's your new theme song, bro. Yeah, let me. Hey, let me return the favor right off the top of my head. Y X O Y X, you're the man, and I'm gonna listen to you as often as I can. Yeah. <laughs> Mutual admiration society. That's a good dude right there, That's man. That's so fun. You should keep that on your uh, on your cell phone, Phil. <laughs> Feel <laughs> yeah. you're so chill. I know you got it memorized. <laughs> uh, anyway, listen. Uh, our next guest, Caitlin Tarver. Uh, she's a she's an actress, Phil. She's a singer. She's a songwriter. Uh, she's got new music coming out. A new album called Sub Subject to Change, yes. uh, which is coming out soon. Uh, I'm going to play you a clip of one of her songs. Um, I believe it's called You Don't Know, and it's got 57 million YouTube views, Phil. 57, closer to 58. I rounded it down. I, did, I didn't I did do her justice because it's it was 57.8. I should have rounded it up to 58 and just said 60 to call it a day. But wow. 57.8 million views on this song by Caitlin Tarver. Here it is, and then we'll bring her in on the other side. And then we're going to yes. grill her, Phil. We're going to grill her. Here we go. <laughs> don't look at me like that. Just like you up the stairs Don't try to pull me back Let me just give up Let me just let go If this isn't good for me I don't wanna know Let me just stop trying Let me just stop fighting That's a good song, right? That's a good yes. song. Yes. Hello. Hey. Hi, Caitlin. Caitlin, how oh, are you? Oh, I was just enjoying watching my performance, you know. You had your, got the yeah. headphones cranking. Yeah, like, I was like, like, wow, that's good. Like the rest Damn, of us. Damn, that's good. <laughs> who, do, who, do, who do people tell you sound like? Sound like like who my people, voice? Yeah, who do people tell you sound? Because you, you, I'm, I'm thinking you, you sound like somebody. I just couldn't place it. Oh, I don't know. I don't get that a lot. I guess. I mean, I get that I look like certain people, but who do they I tell you look like? Um, I've gotten Emma Watson before. I see that. Uh, yeah, okay. but I feel like that's just like brown eyes and eyebrows and blonde <laughs> hair. <laughs> All so right. who knows? Well, I got the eyebrows. I don't have the blonde hair, but uh, yeah, I I was gonna say you look a lot like Emma Watson as well. I do. I've I been thought. told that. I've been yeah. told that. Um, <laughs> listen, you were uh, you know you, you uh, like I said, I was telling Phil, you know, I, I had seen your music from into your Instagram and YouTube, and then I you know I delved into the you know the biography, and I just I I didn't know you're on all those shows, and then I I pulled out your picture and showed my daughter because we used to sit and watch Big Time Rush all the time. Oh no way! No I, way! I have I have a daughter in college who I used to watch when she was younger, and then yeah. I have an eleven year old who who watches. Okay, uh, nice. She, she's like, yeah, oh, I know her. That's amazing. <laughs> um, yeah. But but how did how did that come up? Did the did the acting come before the singing? Did that was that what you wanted to do first? No. So um, I did a show actually when I was thirteen called American Juniors. It was like American Idol for kids. Yeah. It was yeah. one summer in 2003 and it was a, uh, yeah, it was like a singing show. And so I grew up loving to sing and I auditioned for it and ended up making it onto the show. And so I was like, oh, I want to be a singer. And then from there kind of found my way into acting. So I sort of feel like I've uh, done both 
you know, a good bit kind of bounced back and forth, but, uh, big time rush was, uh, my first like real legit acting gig. Yeah, <laughs> there look at you. There you are. Yeah, with all the boys. Now, did you play? There we you, are. Were you the sister? You were the sister. No, I was the love interest of the blonde. Oh, Kendall. all right. My kid gave me the wrong information and she says, I yeah. think she was the sister. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's been a while. But that's a, it's still, I, I would assume, a pretty, probably a huge show, show still on Nickelodeon, right? Yeah, I think, I, I don't know if it's still on Nickelodeon, but it was just recently put on Netflix. So I oh, okay. I feel like a lot of people are kind of rediscovering it oh, again yeah. because I am having younger kids come up to me on the street, which I was like, didn't you, like, were you even born when this was airing? <laughs> <laughs> it's also a very humbling thing because, uh, you know, like your daughter's college age, like I have college age people being like, you were my childhood. And right, I'm like, right. that's tough to hear. Because <laughs> right. you're not that much older than they are. Yeah, too, I know. Right? I'm like, I didn't think so. But I, it's a, kind of a rude awakening. <laughs> yeah, I, I got to tell you, Caitlin, you know, Scotty told me you were going to be on the show. And uh, I've been listening to uh, to your music today. And, you know, uh, I spent a lot of time getting goosebumps and might it might have even been a, a, a tear or two shed and, and i'll tell you why, and I'll, I'll tell you why because he cries song, a lot caitlin he, <laughs> okay yeah, all right i'm, so I'm a big crier i'm not a big cry. <laughs> <laughs> but your song your song somebody else mm. to me to me it touched my heart because it seems like it's talking about someone who is you know maybe having some issues uh going on like like a lot of us and, and you're expressing what Many of us want to say, I mean, especially, you know, and I, I put myself, I think about the veteran community and some of the things that they go through and some of the things that you were saying in that song just really touched my heart. And I think it, it's very, not only the lyrics, but it's so hauntingly beautiful with your voice that it's just, I think it's going to inspire people. I, I know it inspired me. And I just want to say thank you for, for doing that song. And what, what was the inspiration for that? If, if you could share that with us. Thank you so much for the kind words. That means a lot. Um, yeah. I mean, I think a lot of my songs come from this kind of like angst <laughs> that I have. Right. Um, and that one in particular, I've, I wrote it a couple years ago now. So I don't know. I think I was just kind of scratching the surface of this feeling uh, about kind of getting into those later 20s and sort of looking at looking around at my circumstances and you know I started out in this industry really young and uh had an idea of how I wanted my career to go how my life to unfold and you know like all of us things don't really ever go as planned and um I think I was just reckoning with some of that like oh I thought this would turn out this way I thought this would turn out this way and and now I'm finding that there are things within myself that I don't even recognize or know what to do with. And so, I don't know, it's just kind of a lot of these swirling like um, emotions that I was feeling. And I just kind of wrote that song about, um, I don't know, sort of like a, it, 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 it's, I don't know, just trying to voice like how you feel when you're kind of in those low moments, you know? Right. Yeah. Right. Caitlin, I'm, go yeah. ahead, Philly, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I mean, that's it's going to touch a lot of people's hearts. It did mine. It's on my playlist now, along with several Aww, others. And uh, thanks. Th thanks for doing it. Thanks for doing thanks. it. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you so much. Caitlin, I'm I'm not as emotional as Phil, so I just want to know um, how you came up with the song Shit Happens. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that one, uh, <laughs> like I said, some angst. Um, no, I don't know. I... Uh, I sort of had this thought in my head for a while of feeling a little frustrated with, um, I don't know, the, this tendency for people, myself included, when something's difficult to look at or when a circumstance is hard, I feel like the tendency is to kind of gloss over it uh, and be like, well, you know, keep your head up or uh, <laughs> everything happens for a reason or you're going to grow so much from this, you're going to get stronger and um, I think all that stuff is true, but I kind of was like, is that ever like actually comforting to people? <laughs> what that shit <should laughs> happens? Ah, shit happens. It's, no, it's the fun. opposite. Like right, just right. sort of like, uh, oh, but it's okay. Like you're going to be okay. And I don't know. I think I've just, um, 
I was like, I don't know. Like sometimes when people, when I feel like sad about something, I don't necessarily want to be told that it's going to be for, for the best. Like, not that that's not true, but I think there's like a moment where you have to be like, yeah, this sucks. This is hard. Like, this isn't fair. Doesn't make sense. There's no reason for it. I don't know why it happened. And so I just, I feel like I've had that. And then I was listening to this podcast, um, uh, with, Brene Brown and she was talking to uh, these other podcasters and they were just talking about things. And um, Brene posed this question, like what's a, what's a bumper sticker saying or a short slogan um, that you've heard that you feel like because it's so widely said, it's sort of lost some of its punch mm -hmm. um, and its ability to kind of be a useful phrase. And Brene's answer was shit happens and she kind of went on to say like, oh, when something goes wrong for her, it's like, who do I blame? Like, how do I make sense of this? How can I blame something? So I have this sense of control over like how I can't make it happen again. And <laughs> I don't know, it just sort of all kind of clicked for me. And I uh, took that idea into my songwriting session and um, was just kind of talking about some of this stuff. And uh, we wrote that song kind of from that place of like, you know, sometimes shit happens and it might not be, it might not make sense or there might not be something, right. someone to blame. Like it just happens and how that can, you know, it, it sort of is veiled as like a depressing kind of sad song, but yeah. there's something maybe comforting <laughs> about it to me, well, at least. <laughs> you have, you have this new album coming out. Is it still November 12th is when it's still available? Still November 12th, yes. November 12th called Subject to Change. Uh, Shit Happens, of course, I believe is on that album, uh, right or no? It is. Yes. It is. And mm -hmm. uh, all our friends are splitting up also on that <laughs> album. Uh, it sounds like a lot of uplifting, uh, uplifting <laughs> stuff. Yeah, is that it's really is there, uplifting. Is there a little acapella of any of those songs you could do for us? Or, uh, <laughs> oh, man, you're really trying to put me on the spot. Little huh? 30, I, how, how about this? this? I always love we have so many musicians and artists on the show. And okay. I always say I love to ask this one question. If you are going now on American Idol, right? Oh, and you were in the finals and you had to sing one song for a million dollar prize. One song. It oh. could be a cover, could be your own. Which one would and you have you have 10 seconds to figure it out. What's like your favorite cover song? If you were going into a bar or a jump on stage, you had to do a cover song. What's your favorite? Well, I feel like. <clears throat> My favorite, recently my favorite kind of like karaoke cover song is, uh, I sort of had a resurgence of Sheryl Crow in my listening. Like I All loved right. her in high school. So her song, If It Makes You Happy, is a great karaoke song. I recommend it. I don't know that I'd sing that on American Idol or right now. <laughs> <laughs> if that's where you're going with this. Phil, I'm getting I mean, closer, Phil. I'm getting closer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I... I I'll sing the chorus of Shit Happens. All right, go ahead. Give me a little okay. chorus. Ladies and gentlemen, here she is, Caitlin Tarver. <laughs> Acapella. Okay, Acapella, so... the chorus of Shit Happens. Okay. Coming at you right here on the Silky and Scott Show on <laughs> oh, Curious no. FM. Okay, I'll try to do it seriously. Um, uh, sometimes shit just happens worse than you can imagine. Stop trying to make it make sense. Sometimes shit just happens. There's no real deeper meaning. Let me save you the suspense. Sometimes shit just happens and you learn to live with it. Oh, that's <laughs> you know, it's amazing. Number one, you make the term shit happens sound really good. Um, and number two, I, I got to tell you, now that now that you mentioned Cheryl Crow, I, I'm, I could hear her in your voice a little bit. Oh, that's okay. like, that's what I was thinking I was thinking of. Okay, um, great. I'll take you know, it. Yeah, she's got to just get just give me if it makes you happy. Just give me <laughs> that. I just want to hear you happy. Yeah, no, I'm telling you, yeah, you sound like her. That's okay, it. thanks, That's thanks. Good. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about uh ballers for a minute because that is a such a tremendous show. The rock is just such a tremendous, you know, he's the biggest thing in Hollywood now. Yeah. Um, I got to work with him back when he was with us in WWE. Oh, nice. Uh, so I got to, you know, I got to hang out with him quite often. Just the nicest guy, uh, mm -hmm. no matter how big he gets. But I mean, what was that like for you as a, as a youngster and, and you, you working side by side with, with Dwayne Johnson? Yeah, it was intimidating for sure. But, um, 
he, like you said, he's the nicest guy. He made me feel very welcome on set, you know, took the time to, I did, you know, almost every episode that fourth season or third or fourth season. I can't remember. Wow. Um, but so I would, you know, show up and, Oh, yep. There I am pretty <laughs> funny outfits and hair, but, um, yeah. it was really fun. I, I felt like, you know, he took the time to ask me about my life and what I'm doing out here and ask me about my music. And, um, it was great. I mean, he was such a nice guy and, yeah. um, it was such a fun show to get to work on for me. Like, especially after kind of doing more, um, kid stuff or, or teen dramas. Like it was fun to kind of be on something a little more, uh, adult and like comedic and to get to work with, you know, the rock was insane. But I also got to work with Rob Corddry. Rob's the best, yeah. That's who was, was, I was who was behind you in that scene, right? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I had a you know a lot of scenes with him, which was super fun. We um we Suki and I had him on our morning show here in New York uh, back you know, a couple of years ago, and it just so nice. I mean he just sits there and the guy just off the cuff, funny He's as can be. The funniest guy, like he was, ugh. And he would it was just so fun to watch him work because. He would improvise a lot. And so every take he would do something different. And it was always really <laughs> funny. <laughs> like I was like, wow, this is like, yeah, it was really cool. It was a really cool experience. That's so do right. you have any do you have any appearances, uh, musical appearances uh, coming up or any concerts or anything like that? Um, I mean, I'm I'm touring next uh spring. So like in late March and April, I'm opening up for a band called Johnny Swim. So I'm really looking forward to that. It's like a US tour. Um and nice. so so I'll be playing with that. Oh, that's old Dominion. Sorry. Yeah, it's old, I'm like old, getting old really Dominion. distracted by these photos. No, just listen. You just keep talking. <laughs> yeah. Um but yeah, so I have those shows booked for that, but I'm hoping to play, you know, some at some point before then as well, but I'm just waiting to, you know, kind of see what's open and, and what shakes yeah. out. And you nice. were on, you, you were on, um, Songland too, right? Weren't you? Yeah. A, that's right. A, a, a competition show. Yep. Yeah. And, and yep. how'd you, how'd you do on that? Well, I won that, that photo with old dominion. Um, oh, that's, so, wow. You won the yeah. contest. Okay. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Was it an old dominion song that you won with, or they were just well, the so, judges? So the concept of that show is based or the premise or whatever is basically like, uh, each week there's a, like four songwriters that come on and sing their original song for whatever musical act is on that week. So, I was on the old dominion episode. So I was one of the songwriters pitching my songs and um, yeah. And then, so the, each episode, a winner is chosen and the winning song gets recorded by the band wow. that is the guest on the show that week. So, you know, it's really to kind of shine a spotlight on songwriting and what that whole industry is. And um, it was really, really cool uh, to get to do that and to sort of be recognized um, uh, for my songwriting, you know, just alone like and not me as an artist or whatever but just to have my song that i wrote chosen you know by a band like old dominion was really um really exciting right no doubt. Have, I, they, what i have is, is uh are they the, they have i uh, was on a boat that day. it's all yes, right now yes, 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 yes. <laughs> <laughs> why don't you sing us a little bit a uh, you know what i i, I would I, I all i know is i was on a boat that day <laughs> caitlin don't yeah. ask me I'll, I'll sit here all night and sing for you <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah i just want to encourage everybody who's watching it. and you know the suki and scott show has a worldwide audience everybody download Caitlin's music. You're not going to be disappointed. And Hey Scott, put that album cover back up. <laughs> the one that they can pre-order. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. That's pre pre-order yep. pre-order. Pre pre right. It's on vinyl slash CD and digital right now. Uh, you could pre-order it. It's called subject to change. Uh, the hit song shit happens is on there. <laughs> Yep. Um, and it's, uh, it's going to be a, a big, I have a feeling it's going to be a big seller. You really, it's Caitlin, you have an amazing voice. Oh, thank um, you. Just really, yes. really good. You got the, you got the look, you got the package. Um, <laughs> Thanks and so much. just, yeah, just keep, you're out, you're out in L in LA. Yep. I assume. Mm -hmm. Good for you. Good for you. I just am. keep doing what nice. you're doing and, uh, you know, keep acting, keep singing and, uh, just have a good time. Cause before you know it, you're just, you're old like us and, and it's over. <laughs> 
<laughs> I know. That's why I have all these songs. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, and they're awesome. They're awesome. Thank you so much for having me, you guys. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, Caitlin, thank Bye, you. Caitlin. Enjoy and, and, and continued success. Thank you so much. Take have care. Good night. Bye. Phil, she's great. Wow. Talk about the whole package, man. Beautiful. She's a, she's a great voice, singer. Wow. Beautiful young lady. She's going to, she's going to go far. She's yeah, go far. no, that's great. Let me, uh, yeah. let me get us back to here. Um, Philly kids. So uh, yeah, I mean, what a great show. Caitlin Tarver, Bill Engvall. Yes. Uh, how about Bill just coming on? He's like, he's on vacation. <laughs> he's like, yeah, Scotty, I've got anything for you. I love that. Um, yeah. Philly kids. So, so this past weekend we surprised my daughter at, at school. Yeah. And, and we went to, she, 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 her boyfriend is in a fraternity. Um, he's like one of the, one of the main guys in the fraternity, you know, he's one of the cool dudes. Right. And, um, we went to a couple of fraternity parties on Saturday and literally you're literally standing in like muddy grass kids all around you, you know, 19, 20, 21 year old kids. It literally like Sodom and Gomorrah, Phil. Uh, and here's, here's a little, here's a little video that I took in the backyard of one. The frats are oh, literally, no. they're literally disgusting. The insides are the, the floors are sticky. There's garbage all over the place. It's just, it's a mess, right? It's just that like any, any, any department of, 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 uh, what the hell am I think of They're going to shut health. it down. Department okay. of health going to shut it down. But anyway, so here's a little video like I took in the backyard. And you see, like, parents come to visit. So there are parents at these parties. Right. Um, but here, take a look at this. And it was just, it, I'm in the middle of all of this. Watch. Hey, except nobody's our age. I like and how you said nobody's our age. Nobody's our age. <laughs> you think? <laughs> and, and by the way, that's going on at every fraternity house on campus. Right. You know, there's like 10, 15 of them. Everybody's got different things going on. The DJ's going. There's alcohol flowing around the place. And it's just it's just wild. And I'm just like, man, I, I feel old. But it also <laughs> like I feel like I'm back at college again because nothing changes. Right. You know, it's all the same year after year. Uh, but it was just, uh, it was so much fun, so much fun. And of course, Friday night, if you missed it, my big uh, appearance with George Lopez on Extra. Uh, got another one coming up with our boy Chaz Pomentary, uh, who I went to his restaurant here in the New York area to go film with him. We had such, we had some good food, Phil. I'll tell you, he brought out, he brought out the big guns, man, for, uh, for our interview. And, um, <laughs> It's it's pretty funny. I think I threw up a picture last time. Yeah. Uh, where was it? Where is that shot? Right here. So here, here's Chaz and I in his restaurant, and you can't see what's on the table from, but it's like lobster, shrimp, linguine. Uh, it was really good stuff, but uh, so much fun. Listen, tomorrow. By the way, I got I got to tell you who's on the rest of this week. Yeah. What's happening this week? So tomorrow we have uh, the Sklar brothers. They are comedians, just presented at the Emmy Awards. Uh, they're identical twins. I don't know if you've ever seen them, but they are funny as heck. Uh, they're coming on with us tomorrow. A guy by the name of Jason Chand is coming on tomorrow. He's our musical guest. Nice. Uh, and how about this? On Thursday, we have a real live uh, mob guy coming on. Gunner Lindblom out of Chicago. Spent, yeah. spent his time in prison. He uh, he's a put him in Phil Gunner Lindblom. He's a he's a mob. Uh, he's a former mob guy. Now he's he does the hosting, the podcasting. Uh, he's got the books about his life when he was in the mob, and he's coming on. And That's a big uh, dude, man. That's yeah, a big he's dude. he's a big guy. He's got some amazing stories. He was in prison, did the whole thing. Uh, he's coming on. He'll have some wild stories for us. And uh, on Thursday also is, um, how about this, Phil? Who sings this? And you are my lady, everything Freddie. I need and more. The legendary Freddie Jackson. Freddie Jackson coming Woo! on the show on Thursday. You are my lady. Yeah. Love baby. that song. So we, got some, uh, we got some good shows ahead. And, uh, you know, we'll keep rolling along.
Do you uh, you feel like singing a little bit? I'm I'll, I'm going to sing one to finish off the show. Uh, nice. Because for some reason, my throat is acting weird. I don't. So all this talking we're doing when you I host. Think, I think it is. All this I talking. I did three one-hour shows today earlier. Yeah. Plus, we've been uh, out here. We've been out here for over an hour, and I can see my wife in the house. She's she's <laughs> looking. She's looking out the back window. <laughs> Fred, come on, it's ready. Your food's ready. I know she's starving uh, to death. All right, go ahead, my man. Give us uh, give us a little finale, and then we'll uh, we'll call it a night. Great show tonight. Yes. Are you lonesome tonight? Do you miss me tonight? Are you sorry we drifted apart? Does your memory stray to a brighter sunny day when I kissed you and called you sweetheart? Do the chairs in your parlor seem empty and bare? Do you gaze at your doorstep and picture me there? Is your heart filled with pain? Shall I come back again? Tell me, dear, are you lonesome tonight? Na, na, nee, na, na, nee, na. Phil, you know what I'm going to do at 9 o'clock? Uh, I'm going to rebroadcast this show. That's what we'll do. Nice. 9 o'clock, we'll rebroadcast it. Tell your friends, tell your relatives, and uh, let's make uh, – like sheep sure. and get the flock out of here, Philly. Will do. Um, Will do. Whoa, good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. Nah, 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 nah. Good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. Nah, 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 nah. We hate to leave you, but we really must say, oh, good night, sweetheart. Good, Good night. night.